BlackBerry have given us as developers to specifically make games for and other apps as well. So it's a normal phone. It's about the same size as any other phone you'll get. And it comes in this really nice packaging as well. It's very polished and uh, looks like something you might actually buy in a store. And it's about the same size as the Galaxy S2 box. And uh, the phone itself is fair, fairly unremarkable. It's quite a big screen. I'll take my Samsung Galaxy S2 and put it alongside and you'll see that the size is almost exactly the same. The screen size on this one is a 4.3 inch on the Galaxy S2 and it's slightly smaller on Blackberry. It's about 4.2 inches but the difference you'll see is that this has a much sharper resolution. This one has a 1280 by 768 resolution while the Galaxy S2 just has an 800 by 480 so that puts the Blackberry Dev Alpha firmly in the retina category and that's a good thing for developers you've got so many more pixels and so much more detail so by default they give you this nifty little cover it's made out of silicon which isn't too bad but if we really want to see how thin this device is we'll have to take it off it's got a lot of stuff written on the back property of research of in motion probably shouldn't peel that off okay so let's compare the size the screens okay so in terms of actual thickness let's put it side by side and as you can see it's a little thicker than the Galaxy S2 which isn't too much of a problem if you're used to an iPhone you'll be perfectly fine with this it's about the same length, same width same height so not much of a difference for he here actually I mean you'd expect Blackberry to come out with a lot of keyboard based devices but with this one they've gone down a really standard route and you've got this fairly unremarkable piece of kit. It's even got like a little barcode here that's got my name attached to it somehow. So, oh, can't sell that on eBay. But the phone itself is it feels great in the hand. It's heavier than the Galaxy, which is a which can be a good thing. Like the iPhone, it gives you a feel of solidity, I guess. Makes it feel like a premium device. But the best part of this phone has to be the screen. I mean, it's almost a retina display. I don't know what the definition of retina is, but I'm guessing it's close to about 300 dots per inch, or pixels per inch. And this is apparently a 356 pixels per inch screen. So everything is ridiculously sharp. I mean, I can't see pixels on this. So that's a good thing. But for the average user, this should be fine. So it comes with a slot, I think that's for the SD card or a SIM card slot. And as you can see, it says 16 gigs, which is the standard phone size you get. So interestingly, they've gone with the speakers on the bottom and uh, the power button on the top, the volume on the side, and the USB cables on the other side. So it's a little bit different. It's a lot like the Playbook, in fact. You got the volume buttons on top, just like on the Playbook. So I'll bring that around to show you as well. Here you go, BlackBerry Playbook. Has the volume buttons on top, the USB slots at the bo bottom, and two speakers in the side. So it's a lot like that. And I think they've just gone for a very similar design in terms of height. It's almost exactly the same. So maybe they were going for like a double display kind of thing, which could be handy. So enough about the comparisons. Let's have a look at the performance and how I actually get apps onto it. So let's have a look at the stuff you get on this phone. So with the Android phone, you get all your standard apps like... Gmail, YouTube, the Play Store, music. But 
with the dev alpha, you've got literally nothing. I mean, it's so bare that you can you can't even change the wallpaper, and this is the default wallpaper, and there's no way for you to change the wallpaper even. So that kind of gives you a um, an idea of how much you can actually change in this phone and how close to release this is. So all you have is the camera, which actually does work and works pretty well. So it's a camera and a camera. Oh, inception. All right, so that's pretty decent. Uh, there is no gallery button, so that's a bit weird. So all you can do is take a photo and I guess it just disappears somewhere. Okay. Uh, another app you have is the browser, and the browser is not too bad either. It's about the same as the Playbook browser, which is a good thing. It's got all the um, HTML5 standard uh, technology, so you can view all your content. It's got a Flash player, which is good. The only problem it has is it doesn't save any of your history, which is annoying, and you can't use the settings, which is also a little annoying. But then again, it was never intended to be a regular device. So that's the two apps that you get by default. And these are all the other apps I've just put on the device to debug. Now I'll take you through getting an app onto the device. Now, because this is a developer alpha, the main purpose is to actually get your own apps onto the device. And the way you do that normally is by putting the phone into something called a development mode. It's kind of like side loading apps. You could do that on Android by just downloading APKs. You can do that on Windows Phone using special apps. Uh, the Cydia store is another way on iOS. And on this, it's actually supported by default. So the only reason you'd actually use this is if you were actually developing for the phone itself. And I do not endorse you pirate apps this way. Okay, so connecting the phone up isn't too hard at all. All you have to do is put in the IP address and set it to run and it works wirelessly which is excellent. I mean you could give this phone to someone else to try it out and you could be building on it as they play. So that's something that's really well done by Blackberry and while that's happening I'll take you through the way apps work on this device. It's quite similar to Playbook because it actually does run on the same OS. So the way it works is you swipe from the bottom to close it. Well, in some states you can actually minimize it. So by default this is still running and you can switch apps by sliding from left and right which is fantastic. I mean, it's not great for games because obviously you don't want the games to keep running in the background, but that's what the developers have to look at. Okay, once the game's built, let's have a run. And there we go. So this is my game. I've made it in the last two days. And basically all you do is move about and blast each other off. Now the great thing about this is because it runs on almost the same OS as the playbook, all I have to do is one click of a button and bam, it's on my playbook as well. So there you go. Same game, the same code is running on the playbook as well. So there you go. That's the Blackberry Dev Alpha. And it should come to stores near you in a different form. But as of now, this is the best they've got.